Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the latest in Creality's Ender 3 series, the Ender 3 V3+. Plus. This large format 3D printer is the bigger brother to the Ender 3 V3 and inherits its first-of-a-kind motion system, a Core XZ system. That's right, the X and Z axes are coupled together, and two motors work together to move the hot end up, down, left, and right. In addition to this weird motion platform, the Ender 3 V3 Plus is packed full of every feature that Clipper has to offer. But is the V3 Plus worth your hard-earned money? Let's find out. Before we begin, this Ender 3 V3 Plus was provided for me to review by SaneSmart, a leading retailer of electronics. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this printer for the last month. My channel does have affiliate links in the description, so if you like anything you see in the videos, you can use those links to help support my channel. We appreciate it. Now let's get into it. The Ender 3 V3 Plus is a filament-based 3D printer with a print volume of 300mm by 300mm by 330mm. That large print volume gives you plenty of room to work with. You won't feel constrained by space. The Ender 3 V3 Plus's claim to fame is its unique motion system. It's a Core XZ machine. It uses two stationary motors on the frame, combined with a clever belt loop loop in order to move the hot end in both the Z and the X axes. Normally, we see Core XY systems, like on the Two Trees SK-1 that I recently reviewed. The Ender 3 V3 Plus takes that and turns it on its side. This does give some unique advantages. By having both motors attached to the frame, they only need to move the mass of the hot end and the rails around. And they can work together to move it, enabling print speeds of up to 600 millimeters per second with accelerations up to 20,000 millimeters per second per second. And the speed is very impressive. I had no problems pushing this printer to those speeds, and they even include a 14 minutes 3D Benchy file on the USB stick. Focusing on the hot end, we can easily unscrew the tri-metal nozzle. It is a hardened steel tipped 0.4 mm copper nozzle. The steel tip improves wear resistance, enabling printing with more abrasive materials like glow-in-the-dark and fiber-filled filaments. It uses a 60-watt ceramic heater, supporting print temperatures of up to 300 degrees Celsius for exotic materials like nylon and polycarbonate. The Ender 3 V3 Plus is a direct-drive extruder attached directly to the hot end. It has a locking lever to provide pressure on the filament. Flipping the lever releases the pressure, making it easy to load and unload filaments. The extruder was rock solid during my tests. I never experienced any issues, even at the 600 millimeters per second print speeds. To support those print speeds, you also need serious cooling. And the Ender 3 V3 Plus's dual cooling fans do an excellent job. I had no issues with stringing, and overhangs and bridging were not a problem. Moving down to the print bed, we see the magnetic, textured PEI spring steel print bed. The bed provided great adhesion while printing, and the flexible bed made it very easy to remove prints afterwards. The bed moves on the Y-axis, powered by two stepper motors. This gives plenty of power needed to move the bed, even if you use the entire 300mm by 300mm by 320mm print volume. The heated bed is spot on temperature wise. When set to 60 degrees, it reaches exactly 60 degrees. It is also remarkably consistent, with temperatures near the edges only dropping by 1 or 2 degrees Celsius. You don't have to worry about adhesion issues due to temperature differences at the edges. The rest of the frame is cast aluminum, making it very sturdy yet lightweight. It has two support bars at the back to stiffen the Z-axis. Before assembly, the Z-axis gantry is easy to twist, but once bolted together and the support bars added, the entire printer is very stable. Thanks to the Core XZ design, there is no Z-axis wobble to worry about since there are no lead screws. It also homes to the top left corner, so you are reminded about the strange Core XZ system every time you start a print. The spool holder sits on the right side and includes a filament runout detector which will pause the printer when you run out of filaments. The Ender 3 V3 Plus has a full-colored 4.3-inch touchscreen display. Creality has come a long ways in their UI design. This is one of the best touchscreens that I've used. Every menu is easy to navigate, with all the important settings right at your fingertips. The thumbnails on the file selection makes it easy to find the file you are looking for, and you can see the full print history. The Ender 3 V3 Plus runs Creality OS, which is Creality's custom version of the Clipper firmware. This is an advanced modern firmware with features designed for high-quality prints at fast speeds. One-touch calibration runs through a whole list of checks when you first turn on the printer. First, it'll use the built-in accelerometers to run through input shaping calibration. It will sweep through a range of frequencies on all axes, and measure how the printer vibrates at each frequency. It can then use that information to better control the motors to prevent those vibrations. This eliminates ghosting or ringing artifacts found on the edges where the printer needs to change directions. Then it'll run through the Auto-Z offset and bed leveling routines. No need for any paper or to turn any screws to level the bed. The Ender 3 V3 
Plus will do all of that automatically. I got the perfect first layer every time. The Creality Ender 3 V3 Plus does require some assembly. It took about 15 minutes to screw on the XZ gantry, attach the stabilizer rods, attach the touchscreen, and plug in all the cables. When you first turn it on, it runs you through the initial setup of connecting to Wi-Fi and running through the calibration steps. The manual is very detailed, and they include a large number of sample files to start printing with. While any slicer can be used with the Ender 3 V3 Plus, Creality recommends their own slicer, Creality Prints. It seems to be a fork of Orca Slicer, and I am very impressed by it. They have built-in profiles for the Ender 3 V3 Plus, from extra fine detail to quicker draft profiles, and they all worked great. No modifications were needed. Creality Prints can also act as a print farm manager. You can connect all of your Creality printers and remotely monitor prints, and connect to the Clipper interface, all within the Creality Print Slicer. Creality also has their cloud-based service and app, which can be used to browse models and send prints wirelessly to the Ender 3 V3 Plus. With all of the details out of the way, let's take a look at how well the Ender 3 V3 Plus prints. Shout out to Sunlu for providing most of the filament used in my testing. If you are looking for high quality 3D printing filament, check out Sunlu. They have a wide range of materials and colors. You are sure to find the filament you need. Thank you, Sunlu. I was very impressed by the variety of sample prints included in the printer. They had torture tests, calibration cubes, benches, spool holders, scrapers, and even a phone holder as pre-sliced files. The included torture test is the best print of this file that I've printed. Every detail came out nearly perfect. The top spikes all printed with very minimal stringing, and the overhangs are perfect even at the shallowest angle and the longest bridge. The other samples printed just as well. The phone holder popped right off the print bed, and the mechanisms moved freely. They include a 14-minute 3D benchy, which was a pleasure to watch prints. With the infill pushing 600 millimeters per second, I have very little criticisms. The hull is remarkably smooth, showing that dual cooling fans are able to effectively cool down the material. The edges of the cabin aren't perfectly straight, but that's to be expected for a speedboat print. This Desert Kiss Dice Tower shows the speed that you can push on the Ender 3 V3 Plus. As one of the heavier prints, the bed motors had no issues moving it around. Printed using the 0.1mm fine profiles, the print is very smooth and consistent throughout. There is no drooping on the overhangs, and the layers on top curve are very smooth. This Captain America bust was printed at 500mm per second at 0.3mm layer height with a matte PLA. While the base and torso are smooth, there are a couple of defects on the face. Two sections have unexpected lines on the side of the face. The G-code looks correct, so it might be a printer or a filament hiccup. These are pretty thick layers to run at 500mm per second, and matte filament can be temperamental at such fast speeds. I always like to test spiral vase mode, and the Ender 3 V3 Plus handled it just fine. It had no issues printing this G-Create spaceship. Interestingly, this is the only print where I noticed ringing artifacts, almost like the spiral vase mode prevented the input shaping from working correctly. But the tip and the antenna printed without issues, thanks to the powerful cooling fans. So in conclusion, I think Creality did an excellent job with the Ender 3 V3 Plus. Gone are the days of the Ender series of printers requiring endless hours of tinkering to get good results. The Ender 3 V3 Plus did it right out of the box. The choice of a Core XZ system is a weird one. Its advantages are not quite as apparent as the more traditional Core XY designs, but still provided excellent results. I think Creality needed a core style motion system to really get the 600mm per second print speeds, but wanted to keep it upright in order to fit in with the Bed Slinger Ender series. Creality's flagship K-series printers already have a Core XY motion system, so the Ender series got the Core XZ. The touchscreen and user interface is great, easy to navigate, and the one-click calibration for all the advanced features from the Clipper firmware is awesome. I love the wireless control provided by Creality Prints and the Creality app. Beginners would find it quick to assemble and get up and running, while more advanced users can make use of the fast speeds and larger print areas while still maintaining that high quality print. It's only when I push the limits with fast speeds at very thick layer heights that I see any degradation in print quality. But these print speeds and qualities are miles ahead of its Ender 3 predecessors. The Ender 3 V3 Plus is on sale for $299 US dollars at the time of recording. I think that this is an incredible price for a clipper powered printer with such a large build area. At this price, I can easily recommend the Ender 3 V3 Plus. If you are looking for a larger format printer, with all of the modern Clipper features, but also want to be the only one on the block with its unique Core XZ design, then the Ender 3 V3 Plus would be the printer for you. So thank you all for watching my review of the Ender 3 V3 Plus. What are your favorite features? What features do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments below. I have plenty of upcoming projects and reviews, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of those upcoming videos. And if you are still in the market for a new 3D printer, why not check out my recent review of the Infimec TX. 
It is a clipper printer with a traditional Core XY configuration, so you can compare that with this printer's Core XZ system. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.